Here we are, Answers News, on Monday, March 13, 2017. Have with me Dr. Georgia Purdom. Yep. Bodie's still not with us. No, nope. but he should be back. Today. Should be back Thursday, though. I think he might be. I think he's going to try to be I back. I have inside Thursday. information. I know. I know his father in law. I talked to his wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> But he's, he still has issues we need to pray for. Right, he's yep. got some serious health issues, but he's really hoping to get back. Yeah. So, uh, Georgia, today's a special day. Yes, it is. You know, you know what today is? It's Monday the 13th mm -hmm. of March. And why is it special? Because they're live streaming the Nyham debate tonight. The second debate. <laughs> at, at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, come to my Facebook or go to the Answers in Genesis YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And on July 8th, one day after we opened the Ark Encounter to the public, right. Bill Nye visited, mm -hmm. and we knew this was happening ahead of time, and he brought his video team with him, and I took Bill Nye through the Ark for two hours, walked him through all three decks, and we talked the whole way, and we had groups of people following us. Mm -hmm. We videoed it all, the uncut video, so you can see it, so nobody can accuse us of editing anything out. Yeah. The uncut video will be shown tonight. You can get it as a DVD, actually, from our... Yeah online store, mm -hmm. but at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time And I, I got to tell you, though, I've watched the whole thing, and I was going to tell people, your blood pressure will rise. Because <laughs> as I was watching it, you know, you just kind of get upset, you know, right. because you're thinking, how could he just keep denying the truth and, and thinking the things that he thinks? Some of, I mean, one of my favorite statements is when he said, it's not crazy to think we're descendants of Martians. Right. And then I asked him, well, is it crazy to think we're descendants of Adam and Eve? Right. And yeah. which I kept pushing him on his answer, uh -huh. and he basically basically said, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy to believe we're descendants of Adam and Eve. It's right. not crazy to believe we're descendants of Martians. But some of the other things I, mm -hmm. I told him, and I was able to witness to him right. and present the gospel. But it was interesting because I was challenging foundationally all the way mm -hmm. through, and mm -hmm. that was very interesting. So that's tonight, yeah, encourage 8 p.m. Encourage people to watch. We'll be streaming it on my Facebook and, and on the YouTube Answers in Genesis YouTube channel. Yep. Okay, so we also, Georgia, for Answers News, what do we got? To, oh, okay, you want to say something? We also have, um, so is Genesis History, which is the movie that came out um, a couple of weeks ago, big success in the theaters. They had two encore right. presentation. That is going to be available. It's available for pre-order right now in the online store for Answers in Genesis. Um, so you'll want to get on there and order it. Yeah, if you go to the online store, you can just search for Is Genesis History. If you go yeah. to the online store, you will see. It's uh, right there. It's right there. Yeah. Uh, but you can just go there anyway. It'll ship in April, so you'll want to be sure to um, check that out. So what exciting news do we have today? We're going to talk about teeth. Teeth. <laughs> you know, I think I have a dentist chair that has my name on it at the <laughs> dentist. <laughs> this is Ken Ham's chair. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's all because of sin and the fall. Yes, it is. Yeah. Well, they, in this, and in this story from the San Francisco Chronicle, it's tooth be told, millions of years of evolutionary history mark those molars. So basically by examining um, your teeth um, uh -huh. and certain carbon isotopes, they can figure out what types of plants people ate in the past, or other organisms ate in well, the past. Well, you can probably tell what I ate for breakfast. Yeah, I don't want to know. Okay. <laughs> Neither does your dentist. Okay. So um, they were saying that different organisms eat different things. So like chimps ate more from trees and shrubs. Um, Australopithecus, which is Lucy, um, well, she diversified, they said, beyond the chimp diet. And then humans, um, they find out they had large, they actually ate large quantities of meat. So they didn't have as much of the, you know, certain, um, uh, you know, whatever they can tell from the vegetation. But so what? So different organisms ate different things. That's really not all that shocking. We're different created kinds. So that well, that's a great revelation. Yeah. Well, sometimes I ate plants, sometimes I ate meat. Yeah. Fascinating observational science has nothing to do with evolution. <laughs> right. It's just imposing that on the. Of course, they say, uh, you know, ultimately this helped to our evolutionary success because they have to add evolution right. into it somewhere, don't well, they? Well, and they even said Neanderthals, um, it looked like they had some physiological stressful events like illness and malnutrition. Well, they were probably shortly after the um, ice, age. ice Age. And so, yeah, it was a very tumultuous time and, and very problematic. So that could be true. That's not all that. See, see here's, a, here's a good example of where when they do observational science like this and they can look at their teeth mm -hmm. and, and you can determine certain things, 
you, you know, we agree with that evidence. Yeah, absolutely. But they're putting it in an evolutionary framework. We were putting in a whole different framework right. that, hey, after the flood, flood generated an ice age. There were groups of people that moved out after the Tower of Babel, mm -hmm. different places. Neanderthals were probably a, an isolated group. Right. People suffer from diseases yeah. because of sin and so on. If they're isolated, they, they might not even have enough food. There are mm -hmm. people in the world today that, that uh, starve, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah. So, so it's not... Again, I'm just trying to impose that on the data, the evolution. Oh, ideas. look at that. I'm getting lots of little thingies emojis, again. Emojis, yeah. Emojis. Send us your okay. emojis. They're all screaming to across. We love to see all the emoji, emoji the things. Emoji. Yeah. And uh, uh, some of them said, some of them said angry faces. <laughs> I've <laughs> seen that before. Yeah. yeah. Somebody a lot showed of them, me a lot screenshot of thumbs up, of that. And some of them are hearts, and then yeah. some of them are. <laughs> I, don't, I guess, it's, I guess they don't like us and what oh, we're right. saying. But Nothing Georgia. new there. Okay. They're, they're meant for you. They're not meant for me. Oh, okay. I am sure of that. All right, so Never your fault. And tell us your comments and any questions that you have. And we have uh, people from all over. Hey, if there's anyone from Australia, uh, oh, yeah. anyone from Australia, I'm going to tell you something about. I'm coming over in November and reengage.org.au. But if anyone from Australia, let us know that you're from Australia because I'm uh, coming over to do a conference in November. Yeah. Anyway, okay, Neanderthal right. again. Neanderthals again. And teeth again. And teeth again. So, Yahoo News online, Neanderthal wow. used aspirin for tooth pain. We're so. really getting our, our mouth into this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, apparently, they found these teeth from a Neanderthal that had, it looked, they can tell it had a bad dental um, abscess. And so, he ate, um, basically, an antibiotic fungus called penicillin, which everyone should be familiar with because we get our antibiotic penicillin. How do they know they ate penicillin? They can tell from what's in the teeth. What's in the this, teeth? Yeah. Okay. And so, and he also chewed this on bits. This is Yahoo of, News Online, right. this one. Yeah. They chewed on bits of poplar tree, which has salicylic acid. Um, so, I'm probably not pronouncing that right. But, anyways, close enough. But that's modern day aspirin, basically. That's the main ingredient in aspirin. And, so and he, they go on to talk about, they, they actually say, hey, we, we, we've, uh, you know, what we've noticed with these people, they actually had a good knowledge of medicinal plants mm -hmm. and. And wow, this contrasts with the simplistic view of ancient relatives. Well, that's because they have this evolutionary view. Right, exactly. And I believe man learned to grunt, then learned to talk. You mm -hmm. know, he was just some evolutionary brute. brute. And they go on here and they say, wow, this gives us a different view. And they even talk about Neanderthals, the sophisticated Sophist beings yeah, who did cave art, took care of the elderly, buried their dead, made me the first jewelers. They had, had musical instruments. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I remember seeing the first picture I ever saw mm -hmm. uh, of a Neanderthal was looking like some, uh, you know, half man, brute. half a mm -hmm. brute type, yeah. uh, you know, cave being of mm -hmm. some sort. Now they're realizing, hey, they were very sophisticated. Yeah, they were. And, of course, they were 100% human, and that's what we'd expect, right? And we can study their DNA and see that. And, um, and we have a really good um, DVD by Dr. David DeWitt on that um, called Did Neanderthals and Modern Humans... Sorry. Share a common gene pool. So he's done a lot of original research right. in this particular area um, because it's kind of an interesting story because initially they didn't think Neanderthals and humans were related based on genetics. But Dr. DeWitt was like, no, there's enough archaeological evidence and things to indicate they are fully human. And lo and behold, the research that he did and then research other secular re secular researchers did showed that. So Perfect. it's a really good story. Someone asked what article was that. It was Yahoo News Online. Oh, Neanderthal used aspirin for tooth pain. Yeah. So there we are. Okay. There's people from Texas watching. That's almost Australia. <laughs> it's another country. Okay. You ready? Yes. I.B. Times, part human, part Neanderthal skulls found in China trigger debate. That's Neanderthal again. Well, he's, Neanderthal is really famous. He's in the news. Them, you know? okay. yeah. Did they belong to the mysterious Denosovans? Right. What are Denosovans? Denosovans are another um, group of individuals. They're fully human. We only really have a few finger bones from them, but they were able to extract DNA and find out that they are indeed very similar to humans. So we believe they are fully human just like Neanderthals. We just don't have a lot of skeletal evidence for them at this point. And, and again, I think we should reiterate, you know, from a biblical perspective of history, the Tower of Babel, God gives different languages, mm -hmm. and then those families moved away from each other, and other groups would split off, and you right. get groups that were isolated from right. each other, and because they wouldn't necessarily mix back in with others, right. they'd mm -hmm. have certain distinctive... Characteristics and, became more dominant. And that's what we those, see as Neanderthals, right. and then and these denosians. So they found these skulls, two partial skulls, and they're not strictly Neanderthal and they're not strictly human. They seem to be kind of a mosaic, which 
again, isn't surprising because it could have been from Neanderthals and modern humans, like, interbreeding, which, again, they're fully human, so that's not a problem. Um, they said it could be a Denosovan skull because we haven't actually found one of those yet, so we don't know. So, so, so. it's really just showing variety in humans. Somebody said, That's, is it a yep. different race? Well, remember, there's only one race one biologically. Race, so. We all go back to Adam and right. Eve. Even the Human Genome Project, when they mapped right. the human genome in the year 2000, mm -hmm. said there's only one race. Right. So only one biological race. Right. Two could spiritual be a races. People group, you know, right. or different something people like groups, that, yes. but not a. Uh, Ethnic group, cultural groups. Right. Um, one biological race, two spiritual races. Right. The same running thing, in running in a different direction. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Science Daily. Evolution of bipedalism mm -hmm. in ancient dinosaur ancestors. In other words, how these animals supposedly evolved. So how they walked upright. So, so they walking. could walk on two legs. Yeah. Okay. Can you explain this one to me? Well, when I was reading this, I'm like, you know, it, it, it's a lot of what we call just so stories, right? They said, well... The dinosaurs, the proto-dinosaurs, so before the dinosaurs, the ancestors, they had really, um, their tails had really big muscles in them, and that provided them with the mass they needed to sort of be able to, you know, the tail to be heavier, and so they could stand upright. Well, that right? makes sense. <laughs> because of the tails, that's why they walked yeah. upright. Yeah. Well, but that weight, that allowed them to get balance, and then they found they could run faster on two feet, and they had more adaptations, and so they continued to improve. And, you know, eventually, right, they were going to improve so much that they could then fly. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like a fanciful story, but that's what evolutionists believe. Right. Yeah. They do. Yeah. And they go on to talk about the mammals mm -hmm. and how the mammal lineage, that they dug burrows, and because mm -hmm. of that, and they didn't have these tails, and they survived the Permian mass extinction, and so they didn't walk on two legs. So, right. So if they hadn't have burrowed and had had tails, cows today would have had two legs. I guess legs. they'd walk on two legs <laughs> instead of four. Well, they're trying to explain, like, why is it dinosaurs only have two, but other animals have four, you know, walk on all four. And so they're saying, well, it's because the mammals had to dig to survive the extinction that took out the uh, dinosaurs. Hey, they call it Science Daily. I'd call it Fairy Tale Daily. <laughs> yeah. This because one, really, it's just a story. It, it was a I lot th of stories. They just it's make all this stuff up. Mm -hmm. and, and you know what? They present that in a public school as science. And you, uh -huh. can, you can talk about, you know, animals with tails and the weight. And mm -hmm. that's why they ran on two legs and then began to fly. And that's all science. But you talk about God creating distinct kinds incredibly designed mm -hmm. and so on and oh you can't teach that well that's why people really need to when they look at any kind of science story like this is what is their evidence for this and there's no evidence in this it's just them looking at what's already there which is observational science and trying to impose an evolutionary story on hey, it. you know somebody at the creation museum who's watching us live we're inside here oh, in the offices <laughs> and they're at the creation museum watching us live somebody asked uh how long did it take for adam to fall uh you want to hear my reply to that? What's your reply? Knowing mankind, not long. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer. Oh, he was made on day six, right? right. He lived through day seven. Mm -hmm. And he couldn't have been too long because God told him to be fruitful and multiply. Right. And everyone's been born in sin, sin. with a sin nature. Yeah. So if they'd obey God, they would have reproduced pretty quickly. Right. So I would say it couldn't be too long at all. That's why I say very yeah. short period of time. All okay. Right. Salt. So this is, uh, this is about antibiotic resistance. We have a, actually an exhibit that mm -hmm. you actually put together in the mm -hmm. Creation Museum in the natural selection area right. down there. Mm -hmm. It's just off the flood geology room right. about antibiotic resistance, which has nothing to do with evolution. And this is just a good example showing what? Right. Well, it's showing that um, it, the problem is we have a lot of antibiotic resistant bacteria today. And that's a real concern because people are worried about not ha being able to cure these simple infections like the Neanderthal did with penicillin or whatever. We can't do that as much today. And so they're looking for other ways. And salt is one of those sort of ways to do that because it actually causes, it'll cause the um, bacteria to lose, you know, their basically fluid. And so they shrivel up and die. And it can do it really fast. So salt is pretty inexpensive. And it <laughs> is very inexpensive. If you think about it, butchers use that, I mean, to preserve, I mean, people have used that throughout yeah. time to preserve meat so and and so, so God's pharmacy is more inexpensive than man's pharmacy. Yeah, yeah. So well, this, yeah. This was an article called Salt of the Earth is Science Picking Up on What the Church Has Long Believed, and right. from ALETIA.org. Yeah, I don't know. But 
It, it's really interesting, and they're finding that they can use simple things like salt, copper, and all of that to really get rid of these microbes in a faster way, especially salt. Um, and so that's a good thing. But that's observational science. It has nothing to do. They, again, in the article, they talked about evolution, but it's not. It's they, They're not evolving when they're developing resistance. They're just It's just variation within that. Hey, somebody said here, the sparrow in my tree is really a T-Rex. Uh, <laughs> yeah, basically. That's, yeah, what, basically. that's what the evolutionists believe. Yeah, it's related to dinosaurs. Uh, if you go to the Cincinnati Zoo, they actually have a sign before you go into really? the bird exhibit saying uh, mm. dinosaurs are extinct. Or are they? No. They say yeah. dinosaurs are modern short tail fat. Uh, the feathered birds here mm -hmm. are really dinosaurs, modern short-tailed feathered birds. And you go in there and you see all these birds flying around, and you think, wow, dinosaurs. Yeah. So, hey, somebody else here asked, how can I get free tickets to the Ark? Okay, I'll tell you. <laughs> you ready? You see, it costs a fortune to run the Ark. It does. Oh, just it a, does. Just air conditioning alone, oh, I can't let alone even all the staff it. and all the maintenance and everything else. So that's why we have mm -hmm. to charge if you have to be realistic. Yeah. But if you come to the Ark and go to arkencounter.com, and you come down there to Williamstown and you buy your tickets, we'll give, we'll give you a free ticket when you buy it. There you it. go. So you buy your ticket. You get the free paper. Yeah, you, you pay for it yeah. and then you get the free piece of paper. Yeah, yeah. there you go. That's there how you know. get free tickets. <laughs> if you want us to keep operating, we have yeah, to charge. Exactly. <laughs> okay. All right. Guardian newspaper, is your three-year-old fair? How morality develops through childhood. Interesting, when I read this article, I thought, Wow, they must have read the Bible because we have a sin nature <laughs> and we have the law written on our hearts. Yep. Uh, so, Georgia, uh, explain what, just give a summary of this from the Okay, Guardian. so they were basically doing a study to try to determine how children, um, at what ages they kind of develop the idea of fairness and justice. And so what they found was that even young infants kind of have this foundation of morality. Well, again, like you said, the law is... Romans 2.15. Right. Romans 2.15 tells us the law is written upon our hearts. Yeah. So we have a conscience. We know. Right. We know. We know right and wrong. But they, but kids, if anybody that has kids out there know they're not perfect and they do wrong things. Yep. Um, and so that reminds us of, I thought of the verse, you know, our heart is desperately wicked and deceitful above all things, you know, and it doesn't always um, it, lead to... Here's, here's these scientists saying... Research of the young infants suggests the foundations of this morality are present at birth. Mm -hmm. Well, we'd say present basically at, at, at fertilization. Yeah, yeah. fertilization. Uh, and then they say, on the other hand, humans can be horrible to each other. <laughs> well, the, yep. the Bible tells us we have a sin nature, have a sin nature, but the law of God is written in our hearts. Right. We were conceived in sin. And so, and you know, I... Oh, go ahead. Did you want to... Oh, although the seeds of our morality are present very early, mm. so too are the seeds of our bigotry. Well, that's exactly what we'd exactly expect, what we'd based, expect based, upon based on the scripture. Bible. Yeah. yeah, I was a few years ago. I did a, a, an interview with Michael Shermer, who's a well-known atheist here at the Creation Museum. At the time, my daughter was five, so it's been eight years ago, I guess. And I remember saying to him something about, "Well, my daughter is a sinner. I mean, she yeah. is a five-year-old sinner." And I got the most flack for that <laughs> when that YouTube video came out. Everyone was like, "How could you say this about your five-year-old? That's child abuse." And I'm like, "Have you not had children? Like, they are sinners." I, I, mean, <laughs> I remember when uh, my sister, many years ago, sort of millions of years ago now, but my sister <laughs> uh, had a baby and we went up to visit her in hospital and you're looking through the window and, you know, the other family around say, oh, look, nose like it's great-grandfather and, you know, and mm -hmm. ears like it's Uncle Bill and, you know, that sort mm -hmm. of thing. You know, mm -hmm. And I, I just looked at it and said, oh, Rosemary, you're such a beautiful, sinful little creature. <laughs> she nearly threw me out of the hospital. <laughs> You know, well, that may you know not what? be the best thing. But when she, when she got home, she found out I was right. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure she did. Yeah. So we have a, a pocket guide, and these are really nice little um, booklets, basically. I have different um, chapters in them on different issues, um, immorality, um, social issues. This is what does the Bible say about morality. So if you want more information on different um, areas of that, check this pocket guide out. Someone asked if we have Christian anthropologists or paleontologists working in this field. They, I know... Um, there's some paleontologists? Yes. Anthropologists, I would say, are rarer. I don't yeah. know of too many of um, anthropologists. I, I mean, I've met some Christians who mm -hmm. study anthropology. Yeah, sure. But uh, we work with a couple of PhDs in paleontology. paleontology yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, cannibalism. <laughs> Did you know that somebody actually wrote a book on this? And they wrote this article. This is from the Washington Post. Uh -huh. And it, it's reporting on this book this person wrote. Here's the title of the article. Could cannibalism be perfectly natural? This scientist thinks so. Gross. Cannibalism. 
And it, you know what they do? They go on here, and th th there's a good learning point from this, I mm -hmm. think, because they're talking about, well, we look at animals, and we see these animals uh, that, you know, to, to survive sometimes stronger young will eat weaker young, right. mm -hmm. or, you know, they talk about spiders, and these little spiders will then eat the eat mother. The mother. And they go on to, to talk about this sort of thing. And then they talk about the fact that, you know, there's been cannibalism uh, Human. in, in hum yeah. with humans mm -hmm. in certain places and time and so on. And basically, cannibalism is natural. You know, I, I'm reminded uh, that there have been people, and I've read these articles, where they've tried to justify homosexual behavior in humans mm -hmm. by saying we see it yeah, in animals. All the time, yeah. Well, if you're going to use that as an example, then what about animals that eat their young? Yeah. Uh, are you, you going to do that too? Yeah. I mean, you, if you, and if you're going to say we're just animals, there's no God, well, you think about it. Why not? Why not? Why well, isn't this who, fine? Who draws the lines? Where do, where do you draw the line? And, you know, if we look at it from a biblical perspective, obviously Genesis 9-6, mm. if, you know, if you murder another human being, right. if, you, if you shed their blood, then your blood should be shed. So yeah. a life for a life. So mm -hmm. the Bible's uh, there telling us we are not to murder uh, human beings. You know, if people ask, is there a direct verse in the scripture that says you, you can't eat human flesh? Uh, uh, no. You, you, know, the, you know, what's interesting, there's no explicit directive, but you know what you do notice all through the Old Testament in particular? You see cannibalism associated mm -hmm. with a spiritual apostasy right. and when God is sort of turning a culture over to mm -hmm. judgment. You do see that. And it, I mean, if you think about it too, I mean, we are not animals. We are made in the image of God. So there, sh there the should just be that prohibition right. in your mind that this is a very wrong thing to do. Well, if you think about it, after the flood, mm -hmm. God said, just as I gave you the plants, now I give you all things to eat. Right. Right. But then in the same section, mm -hmm. it talks about not killing right. another human being. Yeah. So it's very obvious from very there different. that God's giving us the animals mm -hmm. and, and the plants, but not uh, other human beings. Right, right. But the fact that somebody would spend their life researching this and write a book on it. <laughs> oh, it's a little disturbing, the article. I mean, the guy ate some placenta and had it prepared, and I'm just like, oh my. Yeah, he so. said they, they did add some alcohol into it, and he said when they prepared the placenta, they did do it with non-organic vegetables. <laughs> No, they did it with organic, which oh, sorry, that's what organic they told him. Yeah. yeah, they did it with organic veggies, okay, okay. which is, you know, yay. I mean, if you're going to eat placenta, I might as well have some good organic veggies. Uh, There's okay. a sentence I never thought right. I'd say. So that's one of the items right. we should have left out for today. But, uh, <laughs> but there is a teaching aspect to it. Yeah. So. All right. The Times of Israel. Islamic State looting uncovers ancient palace beneath Jonah's tomb. So this is really cool. This is in Nineveh, so the, a place where they believe that Jonah, the prophet to Nineveh, um, was buried. And so when the Islamic State came in and looted not only the tomb, but they dug underneath of it to loot, you know, find other artifacts and things like that. And lo and behold, they find the residence of the biblical king Sennacherib and Asheridon, his son. Um, and these are two kings that are talked about in Scripture. Um, you know what, there's been a number of times over the years, um, going back many, many years, I remember when uh, people were claiming that certain things in the Bible didn't exist because they never found mm -hmm. evidence, and then right. later on they find they evidence, find it. Mm -hmm. evidence of them. This, you know, archaeology verifies the Bible over and over it and does. over again. Yeah. So chapters 18 and 19 of Second Kings talk about that. There's a passage in Isaiah 37 that talks about the Sennacherib. Basically, he was killed by two of his sons, and then his other son took over the kingdom. And so they said, well, there's no, um, there's a marble cuneiform um, that there that they think date back, dates back to the Assyrian Empire um, in 672 B.C., and although Sheridan's name does not appear, the king is described in terms that were only used to refer to him. And it references him rebuilding of Babylon after his father's death. So, again, it's just more of a confirmation of... By the way, there's been some discussion in the comments here about okay. Cain's wife. Right. Asking about Cain's wife. Uh, Genesis 5, 4, Adam had sons, sons and, and daughters. daughters. Mm -hmm. And when you get married today, you marry your relative. Right. It's just yeah. you don't marry a close relative. Mm -hmm. Abraham was married to his half-sister, wasn't right. the problem. But because of sin, there are mutations that now add mm -hmm. up. And close relatives married today, they can, those right. mutations can get together basically and right. cause problems. And it was, God outlawed it in the time right. of Moses because he knew that was going to be but, a problem. But marriage is so. one man for one woman. Right. And so if people say you're not allowed to marry a relative. Well, you marry a relative because we're all one race. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> we all go back to Adam and Eve. And the other one someone was asking was, what about 
the days of creation, how can you have days before the sun? Well, first of all, Scripture says that there were days. The right. Hebrew word yom with evening, morning, number I mean, in the context of Genesis day. 1 means an ordinary day. But you don't need the sun for day and night. You need, right. light. need light. And on day one it says, let there be light. Mm -hmm. And God separated the light from the darkness. And so there was day and night. Mm -hmm. And we, we're not told where the light came from. Right. We're, we're told on day four the sun was to be the light bearer right. from mm -hmm. that time onward. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's nothing inconsistent in Scripture there at all nope. in regard to six literal days yep. of creation. Yeah, agreed. So. All right, from ChristianHeadlines.com, public prosecutor quoting KJB, oh, public prosecutor quoting KJB Bible should be considered abusive and criminal. Yeah, this happened over in England, mm -hmm. and we've verified this, and we're actually talking to the head of our ministry over there, Simon Turpin, right. uh, who wrote an article on this on our website. If you go to the Answers in Genesis website, mm -hmm. you can find the article on this. But there were two preachers who were doing outdoor preaching, mm -hmm. and they were quoting from the King James Bible, actually, and they got arrested, uh, and they were fined. Now, they've appealed it, right. but the prosecutor said this, and this is from the ChristianHeadlines.com. The, the article is public prosecutor, as you read, quoting yeah. King James Bible should be considered abusive and criminal. Here's, what, here's the quote. Whilst it is right that if things are said in the Bible, they can be said to be an expression of religious belief, to use words translated in 1611, I'm sure they didn't use the 1611 I'm version, sure they didn't. by the way. Probably what was the 1769 edition. Yeah. But to use words translated in 1611 in a very different context, in the context of modern British society, mm -hmm. must be considered to be abusive and is a criminal matter. That means, mm -hmm. that means the Bible is not applicable to us today. That's right. It's not relevant. It's an ancient I thought the text. Bible is for all people for all time. It is. And man's nature hasn't changed. That's right. Man is still a sinner. Yeah. And obviously this prosecutor is. <laughs> well, they just don't want, the words don't mean the same thing. It's just the society has changed, changed to the point where they don't want to hear those things anymore and they don't want to tolerate those Well, things. it's interesting. The next quote from the prosecutor mm -hmm. really tells it all. To say to someone that Jesus is the only God is not a matter of truth. To the extent that they are saying that the only way to God is through Jesus, that cannot be a truth, oh. he added. Oh, is that a true statement? How can that person say it's a true statement? I know. How can uh, you? And yeah. Jesus said specifically... I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father. And see, here's where, the, here's where you get this clash. You get these people saying, you can't say that Jesus is the only way. You've got to allow all these other possible ways. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, what about the way that says all those ways, are, ways wrong, are wrong and this is the only way? Right. No, you can't have that. Well, you're being intolerant of my view. Wait a minute. You can't say that because you're being intolerant of our view, but you're being intolerant of my view yeah. because it's that foundational clash right. between God's word and man's word. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Okay, so I picked this next one because it's a shout out to Cedarville University, where I graduated from. So this is from the Cedarville website. Cedarville University ranked most beautiful Christian college in Ohio. Actually, the gardens are beautiful. Ladies. They I are. And I brought, okay, this is my bobblehead of Dr. Paul Dixon, who was the president when I was at Cedarville. He actually has a bobblehead? Yeah, he has a bobblehead. So every year, he would give what's called his dandelion speech. And you see these little yellow things down here? These are dandelions. And his dandelion speech was, stay off the lawns, okay, so you don't spread dandelion seeds everywhere. And he was, and one of the things, he has this little stamp here that says quality on it, because he believed everything we do should have quality stamped all over it. And that's what, even in the grounds, he wanted the lawns to look really good, the buildings. And so... That tradition continues today with Dr. White, obviously. Well, maybe not the dandelion speech, but at <laughs> least at least they're they're being ranked as the most beautiful Christian college and 12th in the Midwest. Um, Is that right? So it's very, well, very beautiful. That reminds me to tell people about our creationcolleges.com yep. website because there are so few Christian colleges today mm -hmm. that take a stand on God's Word mm -hmm. beginning in Genesis. But go to creationcolleges.com to check out those that are prepared to sign the tenets right. of creation mm -hmm. that we list there. And uh, you'll see a number of colleges there, right. uh, including Cedarville. The other thing I might say, too, uh, we're coming into spring, mm. and the gardens of the Creation Museum beautiful. are beautiful. We even yeah. have a rainforest area and banana trees mm. and these rainforest plants in tulips. northern Kentucky. Yep. The tulips even though we're getting up. snow tonight. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's weather here. So, yes, I was going to say one of the things that always attracted me about coming to Answers in Genesis was quality. And you see yeah. that throughout the museum. Oh, yeah. Our horticulturalists are very talented yeah. and they take such That's pride right. in the gardens here. And they're getting a lot of new uh, 
landscaping done down the arc. Oh, ready, yeah, ready for that'll spring. Look great this spring. A lot of those trees, instant trees and all sorts of plants. <laughs> and I think they're building their sixth greenhouse right now. They do oh a lot of plant gosh. propagation right there. We that. have some really talented horticulturalists. So you can remind people to come to the Creation yeah. Museum and to the Ark. Yeah. Hey, and for those watching from Australia, before you finish off here, uh, mm -hmm. Georgia, re-engage, R-E-E-N-G-A-G-E dot -E -E org dot A-U. You can go there and find out about a conference. I'm doing the whole conference for a whole day in Brisbane. Actually, it's a little north of Brisbane near Redcliffe, and people in Australia will know where that okay. is. And I'll be over there in November, and we'll have a range of all our major resources as well. We're shipping all those over, mm -hmm. books and DVDs and curricula yeah, and so awesome. on. That's so. awesome, yeah. Okay, we only have a little bit of time left, so do you want it? This one's going to take a little more time. Well, we can do this one on, what do you think, Thursday? Let's do it on Thursday, okay, yeah, because we'll I want to spend some time talking about it. Cause and, it's I, and I want to bring in, I meant to bring it in for the teeth today, and I left it at home, because we bought an ice cream cake for, uh -huh. for one of our granddaughters. We had a party at uh -huh. our house, you know, birthday party. We have about one every week with a number <laughs> of gra 16, 16 grandkids. grandkids. <laughs> yeah. But I, it had a list of the ingredients, uh -huh. and I'm no kidding. It was like this long. <laughs> And I, I want to bring it in and show you. And it's yeah. all these ingredients. And then at the bottom it says, and there may be more ingredients. It was really funny. So much for natural. So, so. I anyway. want to remind people, too, um, the Women's Conference is coming up in April, just a few weeks away, April 7th and 8th. You can go to answersforwomen.org to find out more information. Ken and I did a Facebook Live last week uh, with Dr. Corey Abney at Florence Baptist, which right. is where it will be held. So you can check out our new facilities uh, there, which are going to be awesome because we have a lot more space. And that will be on my YouTube channel. Yes. Did be you know I have a YouTube? Channel. I didn't know Ken you. Hammer's I knew YouTube Answers channel. in Genesis. Answers Genesis has a YouTube channel and Creation Museum and the yeah. Ark Encounter. Yeah, so a lot. Yeah. And don't forget to watch tonight. Right? Yeah, eight, Remind eight, again. 8 p.m. tonight. Hey, before we finish, because there's always a delay here, we ready for our big uh, fireworks with all the little emoji things. Oh, there you go. Okay. Here we go. The hearts and Make the, them happy and the thumbs up. And, yeah, I like to see I love to see them oh, flooding across come. the screen. See? Well, you got okay. one heart. I got one heart. <laughs> <laughs> there's somebody who loves me. It must be my wife. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> 8 o'clock tonight, Eastern Standard Time. We are live streaming the two-hour video we took of myself with Bill Nye. It's uncut. Mm -hmm. You can actually buy it on DVD from our online store, but we're streaming it tonight mm -hmm. on my Facebook and on the Answers in Genesis YouTube channel. Aww. Here they go. Look at that. Isn't they that, like isn't that? Look, yeah, I isn't, that nice? okay. isn't that great? Look, see? See, there we are. I love to see all that. <laughs> okay. And uh, we had a lot of comments here, people from all over. Uh, who are commenting. So All right. do you want to finish we'll off? Let's sign off. So we'll sign off for today, and we'll see you back Thursday at 2.30.